All right, hello kids, and thank you for joining me for this very short video on how to write a composition. We are going to marry all of the techniques that we've learned in the course of this year. I'm going to put them all together in an easy to reference video for all of you, which is today's video. And I'm going to use this example in front of you right now. You can see it on the screen. On the top above my picture, you can see um, that there are some uh, pictures of some characters in a neighborhood park, all right? And uh, the theme of the story you can see uh, over on this side on the writing page here is a good deed, all right? So I'm going to use this as a model to show you how to use all the different techniques and to remember all the writing conventions we've learned in the course of this year for narratives, right? So we begin always with thinking about the story mountain and how we have the first picture as the introduction, right? This elbow here, this is the introduction where I talk about the characters as well as the setting, which is a neighborhood park, right? Then we move up, right, to the next picture, which is the rising action and the climax, which talks about how there is a problem that's going to get worse and worse and worse as we go up towards the climax. And in this case, we can see that the character has dropped her wallet and a boy who was earlier seen playing at the swing is on the top of a slide and has spotted the fact that she's dropped the wallet. He is going to be the one who will solve this problem. And the climax is obviously going to be how the problem gets worse. She's about to leave the park without her wallet, right? Um, and she can't hear him shouting after her because she's wearing a pair of earphones and listening to music, right? Then the falling action and the resolution of the story will be how the other characters together with the main character, right, manages to return the wallet to the girl and the story ends with a moral or a lesson learned my other elbow here so that's the story mountain think of your hands in this manner this is the most important part this part where you have the climax and the problem getting worse right that's where we are going to spend the majority of our writing okay so without further ado let's begin and look at the first picture and let's take a look at our very first line okay so what are we going to do now we are going to begin um, we're going to begin with um, a little bit of description, right? So um, since this is an outdoor story and they are all happily playing in the park, I'm going to assume that the weather is quite good. So I'm going to describe the weather, right? So uh, cerulean skies, right? Blue, crystal blue skies with not a cloud in it, right? Of baby blue stretched as far as the eye could see, right? So I'm setting the scene here. The weather is perfect, right? The sun beam down upon the earth like a giant grinning face in the sky above right so i'm going to talk about how it's sunny it's beautiful right and adam bala and charlie right these are the three characters here adam bala and charlie were at their neighborhood park to play on the playground right to play at the playground so they were in the playground they were playing it was a beautiful Saturday morning, right? So obviously the boys are not in the uniform, so it'll be a weekend. So it's a beautiful Saturday morning. Remember to capitalize the word Saturday. Days of the week should be capitalized. The wind rustled the leaves of the nearby trees and there was a distant, a distant sound of other children playing in the nearby soccer field. Notice I'm using all of my senses, right? I see the beautiful weather, I feel the wind rustling through the, the trees and on my skin. And then I hear the distant sound of children playing soccer in a nearby soccer field, right? Now I'm going to introduce the other character, the girl who's sitting on the bench, right? Charmaine, a secondary school student, was enjoying herself at the park, reading, right? You can see that Charmaine is reading and listening to her favorite music, right? Now at this point, Let's do a quick check that we have described every element of the first picture. We've introduced the setting, the neighborhood park. We've introduced the weather, it's a beautiful day. We've introduced the day, it's a Saturday. And we've introduced the characters, right? Adam, Bala and Charlie and Charmaine, right? Who is the secondary school student. Now, later on, if I wish to, I can even add more descriptions to my characters if I would like, right? But at this point, this is good enough. And I can carry on with the next picture or the second paragraph, right? And let's go on with that. Okay, soon, right? Soon, 
it was time for Charmaine to leave for her next appointment, right? So here we see Charmaine leaving the park. As she got up from the park bench, right, she was sitting on a park bench earlier, right, her wallet fell out of her pocket without her noticing. So remember, Charmaine is listening to music, she's in a hurry, so as she's got up to leave, she dropped her wallet and she didn't notice, right? However, however, Bala, who was on the top of the slides, saw what had happened, right? Bala was right above, so because he was right on top, he could look down and see what Charmaine had missed, right? saw what had happened, alarmed alarmed or, or worried that Charmaine was about to leave without her wallet, he hollered desperately for her to stop. So from where he was, Bala started to shout, hollered, right? So I use the word hollered instead of shouted because hollered is a better verb, right? So I want to use good verbs, right, when I'm describing uh, my story. So hollered desperately. Desperately is an adverb, right? So I use an adverb to reinforce or add detail to my verb. So he was like, no, no, stop, stop, right? But Charmaine could not hear a word because she was listening to her music on her headphones. So you can see in the picture, Charmaine has a pair of headphones clearly put over her ear. So she couldn't hear what Bala was shouting, right? Bala sprinted speedily down the slide, right? So he was like really running very quickly towards the clueless Charmaine. And of course, clueless means that she didn't know what was going on, right? She was just happily walking towards her next appointment, right? But of course, Bala knew what was going on. So he ran, sprinted speedily. That's another pair of verbs and adverbs. Sprinted instead of ran and speedily instead of quickly. So to show us how quickly and urgently Bala was running, okay? Because Charmaine was about to leave the park, all right? And here, as he ran closer towards Charmaine, it would be a good time to include some dialogue. So, wait, miss, you forgot your wallet. All right, so exclamation marks are good here to show how urgent Bala sounds, right? And here, we can start to introduce the other two characters who have so far not appeared in our story, right? Beyond being introduced, because Adam and Charlie are still there. They're still playing in the playground. And at this point, because Bala has been screaming and shouting, now they will notice what has happened and they will enter the story, right? So Bala screamed tiredly as he struggled to catch up with Charmaine, right? So this is the problem getting worse. Bala cannot catch up because he's too far away, but he's struggling, he's running, he's screaming, he's shouting, and that's when his friends are going to come to the rescue, right? So Adam and Charlie, right? Remember Adam and Charlie? We introduced them in the first picture. We haven't forgotten about them. Adam and Charlie, who were nearby, ran over when they heard Bala shouting. They immediately sprang into action to stop Charmaine from leaving the park. Why? Because once Charmaine leaves the park, they won't be able to find her and she will not be able to use her wallet. Maybe she has her EasyLink card or her bus card in it and she won't be able to travel, right? So the two boys jumped in front of the shocked Charmaine because they were further nearer to Charmaine than Bala was, right? And began to wave their arms frantically, right? So as they waved their arms, puzzled by their strange behavior, Charmaine froze in her tracks, took off her headphones, right? You would too if you saw two boys suddenly spring in front of you and start waving their arms, right? So, panting and gasping exhaustedly, ah, 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 Bala finally caught up with Charmaine, right? Without a word, he passed the wallet to the wide-eyed Charmaine, right? So she was obviously very surprised, right? Because she didn't expect her wallet to be with Bala, right? So Bala handed her the wallet, right? Without a word, because he was so tired, he couldn't say anything. <gasps> he was just gasping for breath, right? So he just handed, ah, ah. And so Charmaine thanked the boys profusely for their good deed. Notice I used the word profusely. Thanked is the verb. Profusely is the adverb that tells me how she thanked them. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, boys. Thank you, thank you. Profusely. And for their good deed. And I use the word good deed because it's the theme, right? It's the part of the question. They asked me to write a story on a good deed, so I want to make sure that I repeat the word good deed. Okay? So finally, in my last paragraph, I'm going to end the story, right? The boys were over the moon because they were able to help someone who was in need, right? So the boys were very happy. All three of them were involved in the good deed, right? They were able to help Charmaine who was in need. 
Charmaine had also learned an important lesson that day. She would always check her belongings before leaving. The children continued their day joyfully. And Charmaine made her way to her next appointment. The end. Right? I hope you can see how simple it was to build a story if we have a clear picture in mind of the story mountain, if we know how our parts connect with and lead to one another, if we use good adjectives, adverbs, nouns and verbs, as well as linking words to connect our ideas, then we'll have a very, very entertaining story that fulfills the requirements of the task, which is a good deed. Do we have that? Yes, we do. Following the picture? Yes, we do. With a complete story and every character accounted for? Yes, we do. So we are fully successful in this writing task, right? I hope this will be helpful to you and all the best for your writing exam on Tuesday.